All right, hello and good evening. My name is Jared Hansen, mechanical design engineer that was asked the question of how would you go about um, making a custom edit to a SDL file for 3D printing uh, on a file such as this. So um, this is in response to a comment on my one of my YouTube videos on editing SDL files and uh, I actually created this Discord so people would ask specific questions like this, send me links and I could help them out. If you have questions feel free to use this link here I'll try to remember to attach that to this video if I upload this to YouTube but so this will be a good example I went ahead and tried it yesterday morning um, and I think I'll be able to do it in under 10 minutes without going too far in detail on things um, I'll try to do this simply uh, I'll use all free software of course uh, I'm using Fusion 360 which is a great software for the hobbyist level especially uh, because there's a free personal use license that you can apply for or not apply for but you can download and get started today on. Uh, I'll try to link that as well and let's jump right in. So that edit again was to extend one feature while retaining the rest of the model. So um, I think these units are off so maybe they um, had their document in the wrong uh, units when they uh, brought in the model, but I'll show why I think that in a second. So it's currently 93.5, they want it to be 140. I'm not going to use those uh, units, but I'll, or that uh, measurement, but I'll show you how to set it to any measurement you want. So the reason I'm thinking that is based on the Thingiverse link here, uh, which feel free to uh, reference this if you want to try this at home, uh, you know, with the same model I'm using. So that doesn't look quite that large, man. I think 93 millimeters is like three or four inches. So yeah, so almost four inches. So that space there. So I think something's off there, but no worries. Let's figure it out together. So first thing you'll want to do is check your document settings. Make sure that you're in millimeters. If you're not in millimeters, let me shrink this camera. Okay. If you're not in millimeters, we, I clicked change active units and I'll just verify that I'm in millimeters. So. Okay, so next we're at, um, in our document, if you have something else pulled up, just go to new design, of course, and let's go and get started. So I'm going to go to insert, I'm going to find the mesh file by doing insert mesh. I have it stored here on my computer. I'm going to go ahead and click that and click open. I'm going to bring it in in millimeters as well, as you see there, and okay. So as you can see. Um, I have the model here, and we're going to start editing. So the first thing we'll need to do is go over to our document, right-click on the name, and then click Do Not Capture Design History, because now we're going to convert it into a uh, more traditional body, so it'll be easier to edit. Click OK. And if you saw there, our tabs expanded, and now we have more options, including the Mesh tab. But uh, Let's go back to the solid tab, go to modify, mesh, mesh to B-Rep, click the body that we want to convert, and if you look under bodies here, you'll see that we only, at the moment, have a mesh body. So I've clicked the body, I'm going to convert it, I can click new component or new body, I'll do new component, um, and click OK. As you see, we just created this new component, which is a traditional uh, model and not a mesh body. You actually can't see the mesh body anymore because it's turned off, but you could turn the visibility back on. I'm going to turn it off. I actually usually just delete these, but it's your choice. Okay. So uh, that's the biggest step. And now we have a more traditional body. Let's go ahead and do merge, and that'll be the last step before we turn back on our design history because we want this design timeline down here, but we uh, have to finish using some of the surface and mesh tools first. So we go to the surface tab, we're going to go to merge, I'm going to click a couple faces for these videos, let's do two at a time um, to try to avoid uh, fusion accidentally crashing or something because sometimes you can overbear the system. But honestly I think that's far enough for what I'm going to do for this video because I just want to extend from here to here, this area I want to make change to. So really I think I'm just going to mostly use this face. So, go back to the solids tab, right click on the name, capture design history. So now we have our timeline down here. The timeline uh, will be important going forward, because uh, I think the way I'm going to do this, uh, we might end up using it. So, uh, you 
you see I'm unsaved, I'll go ahead and save by clicking, typing control S and saving it as Warner, person that asked for this, example, file. Okay. Save. All right, so let's go in and make this edit. And I think my game plan will be to use this face, create a reference sketch, and then completely remove this part and then draw it in custom. But don't let that scare you in that description. I'm gonna make this pretty easy. So we're gonna go to click the face and type the letter C for create. That'll enter the sketch. Um, tap here, we've entered a new sketch. Um, I'm gonna click escape and then type P for project. Okay. Um, so for the geometry, I selected this face and I'll show you that face there. Um, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to turn the body off, the visibility of it, or you could turn the component, either one, just so we can focus on the sketch. And now you see that we'll have this in the future, but uh, again, my game plan is to get rid of this and then customize that feature. So what I would like to do here, I believe, still debating, is I will just go in draw a rectangle, click finish sketch. Okay, I'm gonna turn the body back on for reference. And just to give y'all a quick idea of what I'm describing the thought process here. So I would delete this. I actually prefer to do two object and select a face. So if I change stuff later and I start messing with the timeline, that reference won't be broken. Okay, so you see I've deleted that face there, but I still have the sketch as a reference. Uh, this could be useful for, first you can just go back in your timeline and recreate uh, the period in time that that still existed, but you could also just extrude it back out if you wanted, yeah. Um, but my plan is to re-enter the sketch, I'm gonna hide the body for simplicity, and now let's go in and start editing. So first I'm going to hold control and uh, highlight these lines if it'll let me. I don't think it's gonna because I'm inside of this rectangle. I'm gonna click one line of the rectangle and type X. This will turn that line into a construction line so it's not affected and it'll let me select other lines now. Um, as you can see, it's the same thing as right clicking and saying normal slash center, or sorry, uh, normal slash construction. <laughs> Um, so no worries, let's see, uh, I did the same there, I highlighted and typed X, you can do the same thing by clicking one of the lines and normal construction, right click, normal construction, right click, normal construction, okay, and that'll make more sense in a second, but now let's go ahead and draw out what we're planning for this. So I'm gonna go to create rectangle, three point rectangle. And you see here, I'm gonna drag it out. I'm gonna, let's say, enter in dimension. I'm just gonna make this um, 18 millimeters. All right, I'll click to place that point. And oops, I did that wrong, but oh. And I'm just gonna select another point for that rectangle, okay? And I'm gonna right click, repeat three point triangle. That's a rough way of doing that, but it's gonna be fine. Now let's assign it to match the shape. So type D, enter, okay? You can see that the thickness here is 1.5. Let's reference that what it was before also 1.5, so uh, no worries. And well, I'm just gonna set this one as the same. All right, and this is blue, but it actually should have been constrained. I'm not sure why that is blue. Let's try it. Okay, you see it turned black, so it's fully constrained now. And we now want to make this a body. Uh, first, we'll need to set this length 
So we know that this part worked before and we want to maintain that. So let's just drag out a line, escape, and I'm going to click these two lines and say that they are collinear, which will bring them to the same height. Um, so I don't have to assign a length. And now we are good to go. Let's go ahead and turn this line back into um, a normal line so that this extrude will work. Sorry, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking about. It might be too far in the weeds, but um, that's probably a fast way to do this. So um, let's do finish sketch. Let's check the body. Okay, so our extrude still worked. And um, now we could go in and just extrude these out. Uh, the new shape. We might run into some issues with those. We'll see. No reason to worry about it until we have something to worry about. And I'm going to click this face here to bring the extrusion all the way to that face. Fusion is great about having like little intuitive um, commands like that, but you could also do two object, click the face, you know, and we're in join. So, okay, I'll turn off the visibility of the sketch, and you can see we're really close. So, but Jared, <laughs> what about these uh, edges? I want it to be um, a fillet like that. So, no worries, let's handle that real quick. Let me go to fillet, click that edge, let's start dragging, and I'm just going to say match that. And you can see, did a pretty good match to that fillet. And if I put hold control, type this one as well, you'll see that also matched that top one. Um, these are going to be close. You can make them a little bit more accurate by cleaning up this fillet, but honestly for 3D printing, I think that's going to work out pretty good for everyone. Um, let's go ahead and see what it would be if we cleaned it up. Well, I don't want to merge again because we've already got our timeline going, so yeah, never mind. I'll leave it. And uh, type that. Oops. That. Let's do start dragging and it's asking for dimension as well. We can just click something and it will try to match whatever we click the angle of that foot. So that's going to be pretty close. Let's click OK. All right. So, but now what about, um, sorry, I just hit my mic there. Um, what if this is the wrong size? So, no worries. Uh, now that this has been edited, we're going to go to the sketch, click it right click, say show dimension, and now we have this parameter here, this dimension that we can just click and say let's go back to 16, uh, let's go to 15. So however that is, uh, however, test print it, you know, test a little piece of it. Um, if you want to change, change it, uh, go ahead and just click on this, and let's say let's go to 14, etc. Uh, so that's pretty much the process there. Now let's add the hole up here and clean up this sharp edge. So we're going to go to the fillet again. I'm going to click that edge. I'm going to hold control, click this edge. And I'm just going to eyeball this. Uh, oops, oops, oops. <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my keyboard. <laughs> let's go 0 0.75 millimeters. Uh, I don't like it to go that far. Let's go 0 0.65. Yeah, that looks, that looks fine. Maybe 6. 0 0.6. Yep. Great. Okay. Now let's add the slot at the top. So I'm going to go to sketch, create sketch. I've clicked the plane there, as you saw. Uh, you can see where our plane is. And, sorry, I've got a kitten that climbed up. Set her down. All right. So we are in the sketch. We're going to go to create slot. Center point slot is what we're going for. But first, let's find center. I uh, usually just to play find center on a rectangle by clicking two corners. You see here. And selecting that line, right click, normal construction. Or you could have typed X after clicking the line. Create, slot, center point slot. Find the center point in that line. Go, uh, you see I have the horizontal um, constraint popping up on the line there with the light blue icon. And I'm going to pull out this slot. So you can make this any size you wanted. Um, if you want to match the old one, what you do is, is go back in time. Let's go back on the timeline. So you can do this on 
well, let me assign the dimension first. I'll type D for dimension. Click enter, type D one more time. Or enter, okay, finish sketch. Let me go to that sketch, right click, um, show dimensions. Now let's go back in time and figure out what that slot was previously so we can make it the same size. So, uh, you know, with this timeline feature, uh, really you don't have to be too careful when you're modeling uh, stuff like this. You can just kind of just try it, go fast, and see if it works out. 99% of the time it's going to work out, and you don't have to be too detailed at the beginning. So, so we're back in time. Let's go ahead and just um, see if we can pull a dimension without anything. So I'm going to click I for inspect. Nope, not going to give us a radius with that, but no worries. We'll just click the face. Push C for create, and then click P for project. Okay. Um, all these features I'm using keystrokes for. Uh, you could find them up here um, and modify and create. Let's see, like project and include is right there, so no worries. Now I'm going to click type D for dimension, and let's see if it will let us pull a radius. It still won't. No worries. Uh, three point arc. I'll click that point, that point, and just land on another point. This will give us an arc. I'll click D for dimension. Find that arc. We know that is a 3.5 millimeter radius. So um, that's great. Now let's find this dimension here, which is 13. So 3.5 and 13. If you have trouble remembering that, just take a you know Windows key Shift S um, screenshot. And just save that off to the side of your computer so you can reference it, but it'll be there in the future when we need it. So, fast forward in time on our timeline here, back to where we were a second ago, and turn off that previous sketch. See, there's our sketch before. You could actually leave the dimension on if you want to reference dimensions directly, and we can make it match. So, so I guess you don't have to do a screenshot. Uh, let's do radius. I'm going to double click and 3.5 to match the other one. And then this length needs to be 13, so my 18.5, so I'm gonna say 13. Okay, now you can see our slot matches the old slot. I'm gonna turn off that sketch, and I'll click, wait, click again, and name it um, reference to slot size. Uh, typically I will name all this stuff, um, but I like to be fast for these videos. Oh my god, we're almost 20 minutes. Okay, never mind. I <laughs> just said be fast, so let's get out of here. Uh, all right, we've got that done. Let's click extrude and just pull through. Boom, done. I'm going to go up and click the face just for simplicity. And now we've recreated the part. And remember, just turn on your sketches here or, um, to change those dimensions while you're still in the model. And it should be golden. Hope that was useful again. Ask any questions you have. Um, it's a lot of fun working on STL files and whatnot, and uh, they're all free online, it seems like. So, okay, thanks.